man. Hey guys, welcome to the desk. My name is TJ, and I am joined by my cotton candy colored comrade. It's, High five, TJ. It's Frodan. What's up? And uh, we're about to bring you the next match. It's going to be Nostum versus BB Gun Gun. This one's uh, I have, am personally invested in, Dan. Yeah? Why is that? Because this morning when I came to Hearthstone Championship Tour, I wrote a name on a blackboard. That's right, you did. We had to make predictions in the pre-show. Yep. And you picked Nostam. I did. You picked Nostam, and I know that you're also very familiar with Nostam just on a personal level, so I do feel like there is that connection there as well. Yeah. But you also are well aware of historically how incorrect we've been with predictions, so don't you yeah. feel personally responsible if Nostam's not able to take the series against my man, my main man, <laughs> BB Gun Gun? You didn't write his name on the board, though. I didn't write his name because I like him that much. Okay, okay. Well, okay, so Nostam, uh, you said I've known him personally. I asked him. I made sure. I asked his permission if I could write his name on the board mm -hmm. and he said sure he said i think i'm gonna win i had the best lineup which is weird because nasim's actually a guy that's never usually that confident he'll, when he goes into a tournament he'll always say you know i don't know i i, I might win if i get lucky you know that that whole unconfident yeah, yeah. uh player saying but he was actually confident going into this one so that made me have confidence in putting him on my board, despite the fact that everybody we put on those board, unless your name is Brian Kibler, uh, seems to lose. All right, well now it's time to find out who is going to win this series. We begin off with Warlock versus Hunter. You saw in the screens there that BB Gun Gun has banned Nostam's Druid, Nostam banning the mid-range Shaman from BB Gun Gun. And I have to say that this is the first time that I've seen BB Gun Gun on camera. Nostam, of course, has that stage experience that Admirable was mentioning. Nostam got really close. In fact, out of all the eight competitors that have been uh, slotted for this tournament, Nostam's gotten the farthest out of any of them in mm -hmm. terms of being able to get that BlizzCon spot. He was one series away. He was also one game away from making it back to his second championship in spring. I believe so twice in a row he's had decent performances you saw his pie chart earlier on his point distribution he has almost even number of points from championships open cups and ladder so mm -hmm. uh, sort of a well-rounded player and admirable saying the stage experience might give him an edge but awesome still a pretty nervous dude all right well we have zoo warlock up against secret hunter now a lot of people have been actually seeing Secret Hunter recently. They've been feeling like it's a deck that's been picking up a lot of pace, Cloaked Huntress being one of the more valuable cards in Karazhan to help jumpstart that archetype. Nostam, however, is not playing the aggressive version that BB Gun Gun is playing. He's actually playing a very interesting mid-range hybrid with Karzik Barnes in it. So why don't you explain what this deck is specifically trying to kill and what it's good against? Uh, well, it's definitely good against slower decks, control decks. I, I think that Nasim realized there was going to be a lot of players bringing control decks, especially if you look at the lineup uh, of players. There tends to be players that tend to lean towards control. Mm -hmm. This deck seems like it's going to be really good against Rogue. It runs double Stranglethorn Tiger, Ragnaros, as well as Leroy Jenkins for that finisher. A lot of times you have to go aggressive early against Rogue and have that mid game to finish once they stabilize. So definitely against those slower decks. One thing it is going to struggle with, though, I think, is 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 against sort of those faster decks. He only has one copy of Unleash the Hounds. Uh, he, you know, sometimes those secrets can be inconsistent early. Stranglethorn Tiger against a deck like Zoo is five mana and doesn't do anything uh, immediately impacting the board. So I think this is one of the decks that it's definitely going to struggle with, being you know one of the faster decks in the meta at the moment. But yeah, some of those secrets could be make a difference early on. It's just a lot tougher for it too. Yeah, and there's also the awkward ones like Snipe, which <laughs> oh, yeah. always is 50-50 against if it's really impactful or it's you know killing off uh, abusive sergeants uh, and possessed villagers. Taking a look at uh, BB Gun Gun's deck as well, he's playing the Discard Warlock, and it is heavily emphasized on Discard. You can see Darkshire Librarian coming into his hand. He also has, of course, the normal synergies with the Malkazar's Imp and Soulfire. I feel like this list has mixed opinions. You know, people saw the Malkazar's Imp and the Silverware Golem come out in Karazhan. They felt like it wasn't a very strong, reliable deck. Why bring it now, TJ? Well, a, a lot of things is because of what decks became popular, I suppose, and you know what decks you think are going to be popular. Uh, Warlock is in a weird spot where it sort of targets not necessarily meta decks, but you know decks that might be there to counter meta decks. Hunter is a big one if you think there's going to be a lot of control. Where you bring Hunter, 
Zoo has always been sort of a natural counter to Hunter. So if you think there's going to be a lot of Hunter, then then Zoo is a good pick. Uh, also, it, it sort of opens you up to maybe have a situation where you don't need to ban Shaman because Zoo can tend to be one of the decks that's favored early against Shaman. It all depends on what you what you want to bring. But one thing about the, the discard Zoo Warlock deck is that it can get fast starts that can win against everything. Sure. Uh, and that's sort of what you need in best of seven conquests, especially when you can't guarantee that you're going to get matchups. A lot of times you can't target a lineup or isolate a lineup is decks that are well-rounded and can take decks against a lot of things, and Zoo uh, happens to fit that mold quite well. Very cute play by BB Gang on the previous turn. You can see they used Crazed Alchemist to flip the stats while the Direwolf Alpha was impacting its current attack. And the way it transfers is that it actually keeps that while being able to get buffed. So it becomes a 2-4 instead of a 2-3. Nostam summoning Leoc, not exactly what he was looking for, because he knows that his opponent is coming up on turns where he can punish through Defender of Argus. He would rather have Misha, or, you know, Huffer wouldn't have been awful there. Um, interesting for BB Gun Gun, picking up the Doom Guard. Not exactly what he was looking for, because he has Darkshire Librarian, and he was hoping for a weaker discard that he didn't have to care so much about. Yeah, and draw something that he can't play, so he's sort of forcing a Dark Shadow Librarian, hoping he doesn't discard Doom Guard, oh, but he does. That's, that's a really painful moment. Oh, yeah, and that means that he most likely has to make trades. He could opt to go face, but something like an Unleashed Hounds would punish it. There is no Houndmaster in this list from Nostum, so that's not something that he has to worry about. But uh, definitely a rough choice from Nostum. And Freezing Trap to isolate a Dark Shadow Librarian is huge because that means it. it gets double negative effect, sort of, because it can't get that draw effect. So Nasa might be able to stabilize. If he can get a Savannah high main down while he's healthy and does, isn't too far behind on the board, he could find himself in a pretty good spot in this matchup. Possessed Villager being drawn by BB Gun Gun is still pretty important, though. Good sequencing. He plays it first just in case of Snipe. I know people will immediately start thinking, why not play the Possessed Villager second so that way it increases the attack of the Dark Shark Councilman. But keep in mind, these guys are aware of each other's deck list, and when you have Snipe in it, you don't want to be taking that damage on your Dark Shark Councilman. Oh, yeah. Well, Stranglethorn Tiger is played. Yep. Uh, he played that turn pretty quickly, but it, not really too much is going for him. If he plays Cat Trick plus Snipe, there's not many spells in this deck. And as you mentioned earlier, Snipe can be awkward because you can hit bat stuff if you're playing against Zoo. But it is going to be something that's going to contest this Darkshire Councilman, which is a pretty big deal uh, in the long run. It's just, can he survive long enough uh, for for these big minions that he's getting to make a difference? Unleash the Hound Strong, though. Yeah, Unleash the Hound is certainly worth evaluating right here. Nostam immediately picking it up, recognizing that this is probably the, one of the highest values he can get off of it. Paired with Kill Command allows him to keep uh, a lot of uh, flexibility on his Tiger in terms of how he chooses to attack or not attack. And how is he going to... He has a pretty easy trade to the 2-1 here. Probably with his Tiger coming out and clearing the board, it's going to be tough for BB Guga to climb back. He does have the Doom Guard, though. And if he's able to pair Tomb Guard with Silverware Golems and... Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That is awkward. At least if he discards Power Overwhelming and one of the discard cards, then he can play the other one sort of for free without the discard effect. So it's not the worst draw in the world, but if he plays Doom Guard and discards both of his other discard effects, that could be disastrous. He'll get to fit in a tap, but he'll not be doing anything else that turn in a matchup where he kind of needs to. If you play D Doom Guard, there's one of three scenarios which are really bad, is if you discard both the Darkshire Librarian. Oh, no! Wow. He chooses to do, uh, Soulfire and discard the second Doom Guard. Baby Gun, of course, wistfully looking towards the distance over yonder, wondering what he did in his past life, <laughs> which he deserves this kind of karma. How does he discard both of his Doom Guards? The key to winning and pressuring in this matchup. And well, now Hunter is in commanding position. I, I feel like Nostam has to do a lot of wrong in order to mess this up. Yeah, I would definitely say so. I'll, I'll tell you what he did wrong in his past life. He decided to bring Discard Zoo <laughs> to the most important tournament of his life. While it can be strong, it can also fall flat on its face with its draws and, of course, with discard effects being inherently random. You're choosing to put those random effects in your deck to try and get those blowout wins, but uh, things like that can happen, and you can see exactly 
the ramifications right there. Yeah, uh, the Voidwalker not looking too shabby to stall against the Savannah Jaime, but you know that Hunter has access to a lot of ability to get past that taunt. Soulfire is kind of weak in this position too, because you're not trying to uh, remove the Savannah Hyman. I guess the Soulfire could be used to push for damage as well as abuse the Sergeant. So these are the things that are going through BB Gun Gun's mind. Can he find a way to pressure his opponent now that both of his Soulfires and both of his Doom Guards are gone? His opponent's at 16. It's looking unlikely. It's looking unlikely, and he... That's going to be tough, you know? Voidwalker might end up blocking six damage. He's going to go with the Soulfire instead. I think his plan sort of has to be at this point, try and burn his opponent out of the game. And that might be the best plan. Rag, I don't know if that's going to be that useful in this situation. There's too many bad targets on the board to hit. And yeah, I mean, BB Gungan knows. There's only one Unleash the Hounds in this deck, and it's already been used. If he floods the board, Nostam is in a situation where he kind of has to trade. He, he can't. He probably won't be able to risk. Well, actually, no. Hmm. How much damage is on the board? Five, eight, nine damage on the board. Well, you're, if you're going to trade, you're certainly going to kill Dark Shard Councilman. I yeah. think playing Ragnaros wouldn't be that bad in this situation. Yeah. Instead, he chooses to play the secrets, so that way he can be safer against what his opponent can do. Definitely feeling the pressure here. You can just see that BB Gun Gun still uh, had the opportunity to squeeze in some damage and potentially win. And look at this, face attack with the Savannah High Main. So if BB Gun Gun picks up a minion that he can play, that should just be lethal, right? As long Wait. as the as long as the the trap isn't explosive. So he has six damage on the board right now. Mm -hmm. Three minions that he played would bring it up to nine, and then Soulfire would make a would make 13. So um, and now that he's attacked, that's Yeah, now he knows. That's guaranteed lethal as long as he doesn't pick as long as he gets a minion from Dark Peddler, which is 100% uh, the case. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I think Nostam gave his opponent a small window. I think he wasn't anticipating this, the third soul fire because he already saw both soul fires, both the Doom Guards being used, and Power Overwhelming also being utilized as well. Mm. Uh, it's pretty unlikely for my opponent to have that burst, except through Dark Peddler, he's able to find that burst, and that's the game. Right? He just plays minion, he just has enough damage. Unless we're missing something. No. Uh, am I am I missing something, TJ? Did he attack with the imp yet? He's he hasn't attacked with the imp yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I I was really scared for a second there. Okay. I think BB Gun Gun is extremely stressed it, because if that he, looked extremely obvious to us. But I think he was taking a second to just digest everything and like making sure that he figured it out because that if, was a scary moment. If he picked up a Doom Guard there or a Defender of Argus, he wouldn't have had enough mana to to play another minion, right? Well, he, he discard. He had two Doom Guards already done, so it's okay. just Defender of Argus okay. that could have punished him. That was extremely close, or another spell yeah, as I, well. I was a little confused about that too. Didn't really need to cycle or anything. I think no. he was also. I think he realized that he had a chance to throw it at that point too, which would have been disastrous. It would have been a complete catastrophe if yeah. that happened. If BB Gun Gun threw lethal in the first game, that could have also just been the end of the series mentally for him. Yeah. So thank goodness that he wasn't able to miss that. Well, Nostrum gets a tough matchup early on, and BB Gun Gun gets to take a one to zero lead. We're going to see how this series resolves right after this. Hey guys, welcome back. We're about to jump into game number two of the series between Nostum and Baby Gun Gun. My name is CJ, joined by Frodan. So, a little bit of a rough game there. I don't know, we we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit afterwards. So, uh, I think we calculated down to Nostam. Most likely made the correct play mm -hmm. there, uh, based off our thinking. I believe the Abusive Sergeant, which was the last guaranteed form of burst that Nostam was aware of, would be one off. Mm -hmm. uh, so, even if his opponent had the optimal scenario of like minion, 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 all fit within the mana, and he was able to life tap into it. So the soul fire was the big thing that just he couldn't account for. And all five of those 
burst damage was removed from the deck through discards. So don't really blame Nasa for that one. And BB Gun Gun, I think you also said it correctly that he wasn't sure about the interaction between Snipe and Darkshire Councilman, so he probably thought he was one off the entire time. Mm. And then when he realized that he got that buff, he wasn't paying attention to it. And as a result, almost roped out on the decision, which would have been disastrous. Disastrous. Or if he like decided to make a trade, but even then the trade was going to be bad. So yeah. his play was going to go face anyway. What would have been even worse is if he went face and didn't realize that he had lethal until the game ended and his opponent's portrait exploded. But moving into game number two here, Nostum. We talked about it on the uh, side table earlier on in the pre-show. Nostum's got a very aggressive lineup. Pirate Warrior. And he's going up against Tempo Mage. Tempo Mage doesn't really have any ways besides Mirror Image to block damage, but Mirror Image is so strong in this matchup because you're effectively blocking usually like must be a way. at least six damage, sometimes even upwards of 10 damage depending on what weapon is equipped. Yeah, that's right. The Mirror Image, uh, because of the way the taunts work, the lot of, you're, if you're using Fiery War Axe or even Arcanite Reaper, Core currently to absorb some of that damage. You get some high value. BB Gun Gun, unfortunately, is met with the Fairy Dragon. That Fairy Dragon is so problematic for most mages to deal with that it just ends up not being addressed until Flame Waker is able to hit the board or you just let the Flame, you just let the Fairy Dragon do damage until that point. Mm. Good sequencing from Nostan, making sure to get every single point of damage out. Yeah, he could attack with Fiery War Axe this turn, but he's anticipating the game going longer than three turns because of the way uh, the, the mage is able to climb back onto the board. This yeah. is going to be a big turn, though, if BB Gun Gun can land some of these Flame Waker shots and clear the board. If you mm. stop the Pirate Warrior steam early on, mm. it can be tough for them to come back in the game unless they draw nearly perfectly with like full burn full weapons and temple mage is one of the best decks at stopping that yeah with frostbolt and mirror image and or just racing you because they have you know damage from hand so these are going to be big okay it's not a very promising start and he says snipe one of these minions at least and he does doesn't okay. get the right one though i think he wanted to definitely hit the fairy dragon before any of that Nostam still has drawn, drawing more damage. That's what Heroic Strike is for. He's using the Clear the Flame Waker, very threatening. And of course, as long as Fairy Dragon's there, it's still three damage. Yeah, and it can be pinged off. He knew that he just used Flame Waker. And Arcane Missiles might have been better than Arcane Blast that last turn. So nice spot there by Nostam. This is a deck where past like turn five, you don't really trade unless the card is sitting across from you can just straight up lose you the game. Like, right. Uh, I, I, I can't. Light I, Lord. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes not even. Sometimes you just hit damage it, usually with your face, That's and true. then just keep going face with your minion. So, uh, this is. Yikes. So much damage. He has four more in the hand. We all know that the mage deck from BB Gun Gun doesn't really heal. This one could be over very quickly. Kane Missiles is a nice pickup, though. Very nice. Now he has the opportunity to put a minion onto the board and be able to push out damage with the Arcane Missiles for free. And if it do in the event where some catastrophe, where all five miss, then he's able to use it to clear the board as well. I would be worried for BB Gun Gun on his side if whether or not he's able to stop his opponent from dealing damage. If it upgrade's not the worst draw here able to get a little bit more damage in. <laughs> upgrade. I was waiting for you to, to come in there, TJ, with the upgrade sound. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there it is. People been waiting for it all day. You ever see that episode of The Simpsons where Bart was just known for the I didn't do it, kid? That's what you are, TJ, but for upgrade. <laughs> do it, TJ. We invite him on the Ellen show. It's like, do it, TJ. Like, all right. Tink. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> Do you well, think you just toss Forgotten Torch? Actually, he's, nah, he he's wants playing to, around yeah. the Mortal Strike. Yeah, and that wow probably is going to do it. I, I don't really see a way that Nasim can come back. It's With two cards, it's hard to deal eight damage unless BB Gun Gun were to activate uh, the second Mortal Strike off the top. But I don't know if there's necessarily a reason for him to do so. There's not really any way that Nasim can punish him for it, I don't mm -hmm. think. 
So he can just, I mean, he can't wait too long. I guess he's just going to go for it. He's going to say, hey, if you get second Mortal Strike, hey, man, hey, buddy, you deserve to win yeah, if you get the second it. one off the top. Oh, he's just going to kill him. Okay. Well, the Forgotten Torch with the spell damage just going to get it done. Yeah, there's enough damage there from BB yeah. Gun Gun to just end the game there. Whoops. So very fast game uh, number two, but you just see that the Pyro Warrior, what it does when it loses the board control. It, when, it, when it's not able to leverage its damage uh, over time with weapons and, and being able to get damage in with the board, it just ends up falling short. It wasn't that Nostam um, uh, you know, necessarily played anything incorrectly. I think it's just the fact that he brings his deck expecting to kill decks like Rogue, mm -hmm. expecting to really cheese out decks that are playing, <laughs> taking their time to set up. If you're playing Wild Growth, you're just taking damage to the face while I'm putting minions on the board. And then, of course, using things like Leroy Jenkins and Arcanine Reaper to finish the game. Yeah, and he got really close, but wasn't able to piece together the last points of damage. Temple Mage is one of those decks that's going to punish you the most for missing a turn or for not trading because they have so many spells that will capitalize on that, especially against Pirate Warrior. I talked about Mirror Image, Frostbolt. Uh, the turnaround from the time that BB Gun Gun took the board to the time that he won the game was one, maybe two turns. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that quickly that you can get punished as a Pirate Warrior in that matchup. And it is a very inconsistent deck, but with Nostal awesome Strategy, like you mentioned, he's hoping that he's going to be going up against the Druids or the Rogues or the decks that don't necessarily do much in the ways of stopping face damage early on in the game, so uh, not working out for him just yet. Down 2-0. Yeah, down 2-0, but not out yet. BB Gun Gun is in a really good position to uh, leverage his lead into a victory. However, it is Conquest, best of seven. Anything can still happen from this position, so don't count uh, Nostam out for people who are fans of the Bob. Let's go into game three, Druid versus the Mage. This is a matchup that should help the Mage get onto the board and ultimately get Nostam closer to victory. BB Gun Gun, of course, he is being supported by all of his friends. He is hanging out at the Toronto Fireside, I believe, with Neo Ability and Silent Storm, who are Canadians. And uh, BB Gun Gun is you know, well established within the practice scene of the Chinese North American com competitive scene. He he's the coach, essentially, of the QQ group hmm. over Dozens of competitive players who have graced HCT. You look at Al Sky High, WTY Bill, Dwayne, Talion, and now Neo Ability, Silent Storm, and Frozen even is also part of that group. And this guy has coached them all, helped them succeed. I mentioned this on the pre show, of course, for people who were there, they're hearing it again. But I, I think it's amazing when someone who's been able to play it and grind it out himself and also coach another group of people and help them be successful. This guy is a large reason why you see all those other players win as much as they do. He's one of those players that we talk about a lot of the time on Hearthstone Championship Tour broadcasts where it's sort of yeah. his turn for the spotlight. There's a lot of players out there that are behind the scenes doing a lot and you know doing a lot outside of big tournaments that you may necessarily see on, on Twitch. So uh, maybe it is his time to shine. This yeah. is his big opportunity. Right now he's got a 2-0 lead, and Nostum's off to a relatively slow start. Temple Mage doesn't necessarily have to have a fast start against Druid. A lot of times they can just punch through with a big mid game. Yeah, it's helpful if they start off fast. They, they don't need to because mm -hmm. of just how well they scale. Nostam has the Archmage Antonidas build as well, so very late, hard-hitting late-game potential. But I mean, just, just once again to close out that conversation about BB Gun, just listen to how many times people are thanking him in the credits. Yeah. You see guys like, you know, we mentioned Al Sky High WTY Bill thanking him so much for helping them prepare for the Winter Championship. You go to DreamHack Austin, you see Peyton do very well. And Peyton, the first person he thanks is BB Gun Gun. Mm -hmm. This guy is uh, well respected amongst his peers, which I think is one of the most high forms of accolades in Hearthstone, just to be recognized by your peers in, such a, in a game where nothing is really guaranteed due to the way variance works. Now, BB Gun Gun, of course, he has the Druid, but he's, he's also getting a lot of breathing room, and he's about to hit like cards where if he's able to draw into Arcane Giants, play his Violet Teachers and get onto the board, it's going to be hard for the, the Mage to fight back. Nostam also has some interesting choices. For example, I don't really think of Barnes and Temple Mage being a natural fit, but he does have it included in case he hits the event where he gets Archmage Antonius or Ragnaros, some of these really big swingy cards. Yeah, there's a lot of cards in his deck that actually get really good benefit from that. You mentioned two that are strongest with Archmage and Rag. Azure Drake's pretty good. Water Elemental can even be pretty good. 
Flame Waker can provide you with a bunch of extra damage. Even Sorcerer's Apprentice can give you a lot of uh, extra breathing room as far as a single turn goes where he can fit in extra spells. So Okay. He doesn't uh, have the book. He doesn't so have the Babbling sense. Book, yeah. And yeah. so he's sort of hedging against a, a good uh, Barnes with this deck. And imagine if he plays Barnes and after playing Emperor at the Worst End, hits Archmage Antonidas. He's going to effectively fill his hand up with fireballs, which might be enough to just end the game within the next few turns. So uh, definitely a spot that uh, Nostum built his deck around happening in the game. Is it time now? I mean, he discounted his hand with Emperor Thor's hand, so if he lands an opportunity to capitalize off the spells that exist, it now might be the time. Choose instead, finally his portal gets Doomguard. That is one of the dream scenarios, if not the dream scenario, because Doomguard's so hard for Drew to deal with. Ragnaros ripped off the top. BB Gun Gun gonna try to smite this insect with the power of fire. And purges the Doom Guard off the board. Nostam back at square one, but he does have double arcane blast with the Azure Drake to remove it. Yeah, but that's double arcane blast that could be used to activate the Archmage Antonitis fireballs. Uh, it, it, it feels suboptimal, I suppose, to go for this line of play. And you see that Frost Bolting, which is actually really interesting. He just huh. wants more cheaper spells to be able to fit in. I think he wants to play Rag next turn, but he also wants to be able to clear something off should it be played. Uh, like if he slams an Arcane Giant, it would allow him to Rag and guarantee the shot uh, to hit onto face with the Reduce Arcane Blast. But ah, uh, yes. I, I, and it also allows him, if he has Emperor, uh, not Emperor, Archmage Antonitis, you know, in the event where he needs to squeeze in better, more mana efficient plays, maybe he feels like a cheaper Arcane Blast is just better. Yeah. However, the Arcane Giant is very threatening, and now Nostam has a chance mm. to smite his opponent's minion with the force of a thousand suns. Will it go his way? Let's see. No. It does not, but burn to the face is not necessarily bad either. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. And this is the point where BB Gun really hopes that Moonglade Portal puts out a sturdy minion. If it's a flimsy minion that dies really easily. Oh, oh! Wait, TJ, I want to tell a, a little story here. In C Story Cup Five, which by the way, BB Gun did help me practice for. He actually gave me a couple of deck suggestions and helped me figure stuff out and part of the reason why I was successful for that tournament. Uh, BB Gun Gun, oh sorry, I say, uh, I was yeah. talking about some people with ideas, and one of the ideas that's being floated around was playing Illidan Storm Rage in the token druid because of how easy it is to generate tokens and power the wild synergies. And it's just, it's actually amazing to see it come out here in this position. Because one, we rarely see Illidan Storm Rage be played. Two, we rarely see it be played effectively. And three, the fact that Malfurion summons Illidan Storm Rage tickles me in all the right places where a role <laughs> player wants to be tickled, DJ. <laughs> yeah, the, the World of Warcraft Legion team snuck in <laughs> uh, to Ben Brode's Hearthstone RNG lever room and started pressing buttons that they weren't supposed to press. What does this button do? <laughs> oh, it summons an Illidan. This one's golden. <laughs> yeah, and Illidan goes down, but I mean, not before summoning some two ones and absorbing the damage. BB Gun Gun has, wow. Whoa. That is quite the imposing board with Fandral and two Power of the Wilds. BB Gun Gun can also feel like he might be on the verge of dying, which gives him a Yogg-Saron potential play. Not really feeling it though. You have the Fandral and you have two Power of the Wild. It's a very imposing board. And I feel like you can even tr just trade into the Flame Waker, even though you're missing 10 damage. You have such an imposing board that your opponent has to deal with it. If he doesn't, he dies. Yeah, Nasim doesn't really have a way to deal with it. He, he has no Flame Strike in his deck. He doesn't really have the potential to get extra burn here. And Barnes is still sitting here from the beginning of the game. He, he needs Archmage Tinnitus. Tonight? The tale of water elements. <laughs> oh, man. That sounds like a really boring tale, Dan. That, that, I feel like that's one of the worst outcomes that he could have possibly gotten. I mean, a Mana Worm would have also been kind of useless. I, but yeah, I suppose Mana Worm would have been a little worse in this case, where you probably want to be able to freeze a minion next turn. But he doesn't even have that many minions left in his deck. He's got true. Water Elemental, one Azure Drake. And the Archmage Antonitis. And I the Archmage Antonitis. I think he also had another... Um, Cold Sorcerer. Cold Sorcerer, yeah. yeah. But uh, very little. It was probably about a 1 in 6, 1 in 7 chance that he got the Archmage. And 
it was sort of a necessity there because yes. he would have been able to get two fireballs, which would have allowed him to maybe uh, try and set up a lethal for the following turn. Uh, but now it's really going to be tough for him to push through. I mean, he's still got a lot of power on the board, and those mirror images are blocking a lot. And if BB Gungan has to rely on a Yogg's run, if he feels like he's in danger of dying next turn. Oh, man. But the one thing about Yogg's run now, since it's changed, is the more minions that are on the board, the more effective it sort of is, because yes. the, the, the less of a chance that it has to kill off itself, so the more potential it has to uh, do damage to the rest of the board. Yeah, I mean, if it able to help you get past those taunts, you have 15 damage represented, and there's a lot of times where you buff your own hero to tack with bite or rock biter weapon or heroic strike. I mean, that could realistically be a calculation that Baby Gun Gun is going for to end the game. Violet Teacher doesn't do that much onto the board. Oh, Here we go. Yarnsaron right. being played. Just needs to get past the taunts. He sees that at least Fair is alive. Mind Blast puts Head him on a, uh, on a clear to win the game. Misha, silence. Signs of taunt? No, uh, that's not what he wants. Uh, that's he's clearing the board. Not too bad. Draws the card, summons a few minions. Just needs to get past it. But either way, because he summoned Misha, he's also doing a really good job uh, putting blockades in his opponent's way. So he's probably just not going to die next turn. Yeah. Mostam, even if he picks up Fireball, is not going to win. Wildmental is not going to be it either. So even though not, uh, Yogtron didn't end the game by summoning Misha, he effectively <laughs> locked Nostam out of any chance to win the game. Yeah, that's a scary board. Wait, what? <laughs> Water, uh, I guess the damage being dealt mm. does end up letting it be frozen. Effigy going to give a Argent Horse Rider, but Nostam is going to fall short. And he's going to go down 3-0 Yikes! in this match. And even though in Best of Seven Conquest, crazy things can happen because of Conquest strategies revolved around targeting a specific deck from your opponent, winning four games in a row, no matter what the situation, is very tough. Yeah, he's going to have to take down Hunter four games in a row from BB Gun Gun. And uh, for people who aren't uh, able to access the deck list, BB Gun Gun is also playing the Secret Hunter, which is very aggressive. And that the Hunter list is capable of just taking games because it ends up drawing so aggressively that it's very difficult to sweep at 4-0, given the fact that he still has one of the most inconsistent decks in Hearthstone, which is the Pirate Warrior. Everyone who's played Pirate Warrior can agree on two things. One, it's awesome because you are pirates. But the second thing is that it's also extremely draw-dependent sometimes yeah. where you just get really awkward hands and you're not able to do anything. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Some inconsistent decks, but uh, we'll see if the Secret Hunter from BB Gun Gun can prevail and win him the series right after this. Dan, it's looking pretty rough for Nasm at the moment. Down 3-0 against BB Gun Gun in this series. And BB Gun Gun looks poised to take this one quite easily. Yeah, my, my main guy. You know, I really wanted to actually pick BB Gun Gun before this tournament actually began. But out of respect for him, <laughs> out of knowing my power and the responsibility that casters have in terms of predictions, uh, I picked new ability. But I was also split on that. Excuse me. I, I felt like New Ability and BB Gun Gun were two of the guys who go into actually our favorites of the tournament, but people just don't know about. Now let's go into game number four, Hunter versus the Pirate Warrior. Almost as as aggressive as it gets in the current metagame. And while BB Gun Gun is up 3-0, this Hunter deck also can be inconsistent with some of its draws because you can land into double freezing trap and double cat trick in your opening hand. But to 4-0 this deck, it's going to be hard. Good one. That's my best. <laughs> pirate. Pirate impression. Tink. <laughs> I don't want to try it again for fear of failure the yeah. second time. <clears throat> I'd never feel failure when it comes to the upgrade sound, unfortunately. <laughs> but let's get into it. Uh, BB Gun Gun. Um, the origins of his name are pretty interesting. Uh, he's actually a really big BB Gun fan. Is it? He actually named all of his decks after the names that he's given his various BB guns that he has at home. Such as? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking yeah. at his deck list right now. He named it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> Those are the names of his BB guns. People call him BB God God in the, in the coaching world. <laughs> yeah. So. I almost got away with that one, too. Yeah, I know. To you're, for you're, clarification you're for the people at home, it, I completely know? made that up. I 
actually did think that he was Korean at first when I saw his username because Koreans tend to pair the, the consonant syllables to make a hard sound. Mm -hmm. But then I found out that he primarily, you know, is obviously he's Chinese and speaking uh, Chinese. But he lives in America, of course. People wondering if BB Gun Gun's oh, a Chinese won. native. Um, of course, he is also in a position where his hand's a little bit awkward. We kind of mentioned the fact that this tends to be aggressive, but it's 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 conditional. A lot of times the aggression from the hunter tends to be through racking up the damage on the hero power a lot and then having things like Leroy, the Argent Horse Rider, the Eagle Horn Bow do massive damage. But there's also times where you play like the Tempo Mage where maybe you have a slow hand so you adapt to it and you actually slow play your opponent. Instead of playing things on two, you might just hero power. And then you try to combo the damage all in one go so that way you're pushing your opponent down to low health. Especially now that Warrior has lost his ability to armor up. That could be what BB Gun Gun is looking for. It could be, but the thing is, almost every single point of damage when you're playing against a Pirate Warrior matters. If you are mana inefficient for a turn, or if you sort of pass a turn and don't develop your board, or interact with your opponent's board, you will get punished for it. This deck relies 100% on dealing damage to your face. That's what it does. And if you let them get extra points of damage on your face that you don't need to by taking it slow, a lot of times that can that can end up losing you the game. So uh, I, I can understand why he went with maybe what looked like not a great play with the Hunter's Mark to take out a 1-3. But I think BB Gun Gun realizes, when am I ever going to use that Hunter's Mark again? When am I going to have a free one damage to throw into something that's Hunter's Marked again? And so he used an awkward card in his hand uh, to make something out of a situation where he didn't really have much. Man, I mean, there's so many weapons from Nostam to push in damage. I think he, what he's really looking at is the ability to use Arcanite Reaper with that upgrade and instantly add six, maybe seven damage onto mm. the weapon. Beeping Gun Gun picks up a second kill command. That is one of the awkward moments again that we're talking about. He was looking for other things, you know, whether it's Kindly Grandmother or another Secret oh, Keeper, know. Fiery Bat. Some of his other minions. Uh, I think he was originally looking at the Secret Keeper plus the Freezing Trap development this turn. Certainly the fact that it adds damage uh, is going to be beneficial, but when your opponent has a hero power that's conducive to giving charge to that South Sea deckhand, I think it almost feels like that Freezing Trap, was, freezing trap is worthless. Yeah, it does give you three damage, though, which is kind of important. Could be the case. So but if uh, Freezing Trap translates to 3 damage, and he can de have the existing 3 damage on the bow, plus let's say the kill command's optimized at 10 damage, and then he has 16 damage, he's still 12 off from his opponent over multiple turns, that's still very far away. 12 is a lot. Yeah. Alright, we're just going to go with the Freezing Trap and the Hero Power to try and optimize his damage as opposed to the Secret Keeper, which, uh, you know, you talking about it, you know, it, it makes sense to try and uh, maybe initiate a race, but putting the two damage back into Nostum's hand might not be worth it, but he's actually just going to keep the Celsius deck hand on the board. Oh. Yeah, it could be explosive. It could be the uh, the freezing trap. He's not sure. It also could be snake trap. One thing that he knows for sure, though, that it's not cat trick because he coined for that. Pretty important moment. Nostam picks up heroic oh. strike. That is 10 damage this turn. But he does see the cat trick activate, which gives us a point of damage. It can definitely be a, a photo finish here. Who's going to be ahead? Yeah, and he's definitely going to activate the trap this turn because he has lethal set up for next turn with Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. So he sort of he needs to to get this trap activated because the charge of the bow isn't going to matter, mm -hmm. and he can't risk BB Gun Gun killing off the South Sea deckhand to not allow it to proc the trap right. uh, in the case that it's freezing or explosive, which are the only two uh, that it could be left. That could be Snake Trap because he hasn't attacked for a minion yet, but yeah. uh, he can't take that risk. Yeah, and that should just kind of be it here because BB Gun Gun has 19 damage. It's a ton, but his opponent has that Arcanite Reaper plus the Leroy Jenkins. That is a ton of damage. Now you can see just how strong Pirate Warrior is. If, you know, even if, if Nostam didn't have Leroy, he definitely had a lot of outs to end the game. Like that, for example. He didn't yeah. actually even need Leroy. He yeah. has the South Sea plus the Argent Horse Rider. And that's game number four in the books. Yeah. If you're BB Gun, you know that you're dead because there are so many things in the deck, like you mentioned, that can use Mortal Strike, second Heroic Strike. Yep. The Argent Horse Rider, Corcoran Elite. Elite. Yep. The, the list goes on and on. Yeah. 
So Nasa puts his, himself on the board, but it's still an uphill battle. I would say that Pirate Warrior is probably one of the decks that uh, might be the easiest. It does well against other aggressive decks because it outraces just about everything. Yes. And other aggressive decks aren't going to block damage. They're just going to try and initiate a race with you that you're almost always going to win. So if you know he were going to take a win with anything, I feel like that uh, the Pirate Warrior would be the, the best one. And probably why he threw it out first, try and get momentum on his side, maybe boost up his confidence a little bit. Yeah, Nece it's necessary sometimes. It's, it's really important, especially yeah. for a player like Nostam who if you get to know him a little bit, sometimes does end up falling into the mental trap of being down on yourself a little bit mm. too much. You feel like, oh, I can't do it, it's just too hard, or it's so unlikely, or the statistics are against me. But you have to be optimistic as much as possible because it's a single elimination. It's best of seven. So if you have any chance, you better take it as, as much as you can. Yeah, but we're going to move right into game number five. Let's see if Nasa can pull it back. Another aggressive deck. Surprise, surprise. Well, it's su not surprising for Nostam to bring an aggressive deck, but it is surprising that he's chosen to bring the aggressive Shaman, which has received a lot of nerves when you look at Abusive Sergeant and you look at the way Rockbiter works. Now, it, you know, Shaman does struggle, and of course, Tuskar Totemic, excuse me. It dropped a significant amount of percentage points. If you look at the most recent Data Reaper, for example, just by play percentages, it's dropped somewhere between 6 per 7 percent. That's such a significant drop in terms of performance relative to where it used to be. It, it was actually the best deck in the game, and then it dropped to the win rates of Priest. So that, it's, it gives you a, a frame of reference of where the scale actually is. And yet, Nostam chooses to bring it, but you can see that already that he has different choices. Worgen Infiltrator being one of them, the Eternal Sentinel, which unlocks your overload of mana crystals. That was also mulliganed away. I mean, this is essentially as aggressive as it gets. For a while, aggro shamans were hard to distinguish from mid-range shamans because they would run sort of the same things. You know, they would run Tuskar Totemic, which doesn't scream at you that it's an aggressive card. They, they ran Thing from Below, which again, you know, it's a taunt. It doesn't scream at you that it's an aggressive card, but pretty much every card in Nasim's deck, maybe with the exception of Feral Spirits, I suppose, uh, would be considered an aggressive card. Like you mentioned, the Worgen Infiltrators, Eternal Sentinels. He even still has Rockbiter in his list, despite the change to yeah. two mana, which is huge. And you can see in his mulligans, he had the early game there, so he decided to keep Doomhammer in his mulligan against a fast matchup. That's a very interesting choice for me. Yeah, so th the thing about the Secret Hunter list, too, is that, like you said, it's not exactly adept at dealing with aggressive strategies, but there are a couple of tools in it. We look at Explosive Trap being one of those th really useful things at making sure that uh, the aggressive decks can't pile on the board damage. We have Kindly Grandmother, which, of course, trades up against a lot of those two ones. So that would be really important as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's necessarily like, even though Shaman traditionally has been having the edge over Hunter in recent times, I don't think it's you know, it's guaranteed. Yeah. So we had a, a slight disconnect there during the mulligans. So we're just going to go ahead and, and get, get a regame going after these players. So we should be jumping back into game number five in just a moment. Uh, but one thing to notice for these players um, is that the aggressive lineup from Nostum should let's take a look at the hunter list first because the hunter list is probably going to be where the the matchup is going to come down to mm -hmm. there's a very a much more aggressively themed hunter from bb gun gun which is interesting considering the rest of his lineup isn't necessarily all there nasim his hunter is probably his slowest deck so most of his deck should be able to take wins against the hunter except for the hunter yeah. mirror matchup that's where it's really going to come down to i think that's a really good point like i think the fact that nasim is playing a very slow hunter which is out of character for his the rest of his lineup, but you can just very see clearly see of what this hunter is trying to do. It, it, it punishes decks like the Control Warrior very, very harshly, and I think that's a very good call considering that he's not the only person in this tournament to think about ways he can kill Control Warrior. Mm -hmm. Coming up uh, in just a couple of uh, a couple of games here, we have Frozen up against Silent Storm, which will be interesting to say the least. Whether or not the Priest in the Paladin, which is designed to kill Control Warrior will end up working out for him. Uh, take a look also, by the way, the graph you see on your screen, BB Gun Gun, uh, it did end up eclipsing the three-digit point mark. Very prestigious club. Only a handful of players all over the world have been able to do it this year. Uh, always finishing high on ladder and being able to grind those open cups. 37 is some of the most I've seen of any person. Oh, yeah. That is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, as oh, as impressive as Nossum's. Uh, BB Gun, of course, has a couple more ladder finishes, but 41 points. 
He's one of the very few players to have open cups be his primary point source. But he's also one of the few players to have that sort of, you know, three even marks as far as point sources go, having almost a similar amount of points from championships, uh, ladder, and open cups. His 25 championship points coming from his second place finish in the winter championships, as well as two decent finishes as far as preliminaries go. You do get a lot of points for finishing ninth through 16th, which he did in the spring. Yeah, so uh, Nostam definitely has a lot uh, coming into this, just in terms of how much time he's invested at the Open Cups, which is always interesting to see what player has qualified through what path, because yeah. we do see that traditionally a lot of players who've qualified for some of these last call invitationals have been through the ladder system. You look at Muzzy and Frozen, some of these guys <laughs> who have 90-plus points, which is absurd. It's more points than some people have acquired throughout the entire year by themselves. And then, they, of course, they added with majors, uh, the championship points, as well as the Open Cups themselves. Uh, so I, I do think that Nostam has had a very interesting path getting here, too. I think most people are also very familiar with him, so they do tend to side with him as the fan favorite. I really hope that he's able to keep himself composed, and I think that Game 4 victory has helped him a lot. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just as an update, guys, the players uh, after the disconnect uh, have used that sort of as an excuse to go uh, take a quick break and rest them real quick. Is a long series. Want to make sure that they're uh, level-headed enough to stay focused in the next game. Um, but, you know, talking about their, their lineups a little bit more, I, I actually want to see sort of one of the players from this side of the bracket with an aggressive lineup make it to the finals on the other side of the bracket against Frozen with his lineup. I don't. I, I, you don't want to see it? No, I kind of want to see Frozen uh, go for it all, man. I, I think it'd be really poetic mm -hmm. for somebody who is not only on top of the game and on top of the ladder, be able to bring something unique, but also just defy what we know about tournaments. I think one of the biggest things in criticisms against Conquest, and specifically against the formats that a lot of people are playing today, is that all you have to do is bring the five best decks. That's what people kind of recommend. You know, That's what people are saying what they're bringing. Knoblord made a huge post, 2,000, 3,000 words uh, detailed on the competitive Hearthstone subreddit. He was talking about how, you know, maybe my strategy is just to bring the five best decks. This is why I think these are the five best decks. Frozen just threw that notion out the window, saying that I'm going to go a level above that and try to counter everything. And I feel like that's, that's amazing. The fact that someone can actually be successful with that. I don't think he will be. I mean, that's why I didn't pick him. I, I, would, I would love for Frozen to be successful. But at the same time, if he is successful, what does that mean for the rest of the tournament series? It just means that maybe people are thinking about it too stubbornly. They're thinking like, well, if I just bring this, I should win. And at best, I'm 50% odds against my opponent's decks to win. But Frozen says, you know, I'm going to try to take a huge risk here. And I think that's awesome. Well, we were looking at the tweet that he sent earlier. He effectively said, I really want to win but I don't want to win at the expense of my own fun, is what he said. You know, he really uh, feels like enjoying the game is a huge aspect <laughs> in winning the game. Yeah. So, you know, that is a bold call. I, I enjoy mind controlling but my opponent's minions. I don't sure. know about you, TJ. It, it, there is not really a greater feeling than playing <laughs> against a control warrior who thinks he's got you beat by tanking up for the rest of the game, and you slam a side so spell eater and get tank up yourself, but have better late game. Yeah, I, I can do it, you can do, but I can do it better. Exactly. That's, that's kind of what the control priest is trying to say to the control warrior. But, I mean, I don't want to even discount the fact that he's also the only person bringing Paladin to the tournament as well. Um, it makes me really excited. Just because, you know, in, in, TJ, in, in card games in Hearthstone, there's, there's levels. You know, The first level, we call it level zero, level one, depends on what numeric system you go by. Maybe you, you maybe level alpha, if you're Greek. I start at six. You start at six. So level six says that you bring the best strategies, and you try to bring what's good. So we're talking about shaman, druid, uh, the warrior, or, or hunter, you know, some of these really iconic classes to what we see today. The, the level above that, level level one or level seven, level seven, is to bring decks that beat that. And then there's this weird level above that, level level two or level eight, where you're trying to counter the counter. It's like the paper to the rock, which is, you know, to scissors. And then there's the level above that, which somehow Frozen has transcended, creating this, this level lasagna, if you will, <laughs> of just these are the layers that I'm going to go, and I'm going to go to the fourth one. I try to beat all of you. That's, like, the, that's the real grinding meat of it. It's like that kid in fourth grade. You'd be yeah. playing rock, paper, scissors, and he'd come up and go, ha, hand grenade. 
Oh God, I hated that. Kid. And just it, it, he would That's say a kid that that when he, when he got a wedgie, <laughs> I would kind of like be like, no, don't do that. But you know, secretly back when I'd be like, yeah, yeah. But then he Take. would say that he liked the wedgie, and then everybody would be freaked out. Yeah, you're describing. <laughs> you're just describing me now, dude. But yeah, Fro- Thank you very much. Frozen is that kid. <laughs> He's that kid. Well, there is a, a, a internal. There's an inside joke with um, amongst the cast is that Frozen apparently mm. is my son. That's what TJ kept telling me. Yes. So that would probably make sense. He really is. Uh, but I, I think we uh, have some some other people across the studios to uh, check in with. It's going to be Dewey now. Uh, that's Admirable and Firebad who are joining us from uh, over yonder. How are you guys doing over there? Doing pretty good. Just sitting around enjoying this match and. Personally, I like the aggressive strategies that Nostum is choosing to use right now. I bet you do. They don't seem to be working out too good, though. So what are you guys thinking about this one? Firebat, what do you, what do you think about this? I know that you, like me, enjoy attacking players a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a really big favorite of aggro. I've uh, oftentimes played a lot of aggro decks, and I, I like the lineup that Nostum has. It's very similar to Frozen's lineup, if you actually look at the two of them. He's just the other direction with it, right? Like, Frozen's <laughs> targeting the slow control decks with Priest and what have you, and uh, Nostum's targeting, you know, kind of the slower mid-range decks, such as the Hunter, as we're seeing, with uh, exceptional aggro decks, and uh, I don't even know if the Hunter is even going to be able to stand a chance against all of them. Yeah. You guys share the same sentiment? Oh, so you think that Nostam is in a posi- is like the favorite or p- position to win this series from down three one? I, I wouldn't say favorite, right? Like he still ha- he has he has maybe you know sixty five percent in his upcoming three matchups, and so he's got to win three matchups where he's got a sixty five percent edge. And if you add that up at the end of the day, are you in then favored to win no, three of those in a row? You're not. So it, I think he's at a slight disadvantage because he wasn't able to snag yeah. any wins prior to getting to his target point. Firebat, I hate to interrupt you, man, but we're actually going right into game. Okay. So, uh, sorry, you were making bring up some great points, but. I wow, did. TJ. I interrupted a world champion. It was because Firebat oh was doing too good of a job, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel so ashamed of myself. But we are getting into match, and we felt like that was important. So let's go ahead. Game number five, BB Gun Gun versus Nostum. Don't um, worry, TJ. Firebat can wear purple shirts. He can make the jokes, but he won't replace you in my heart. <laughs> Thank you. He can even dye his hair an awkward shade of yellow and has a mohawk strip on the top of his head. Yes. It was a template that I forgot about. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Firebat said that Nasim had 65% chance in his remaining three matchups. But even if you calculate that as far as, you know, 65% chance over the course of three matches, it is still not a favorable position to win the entire series. In yep. fact, it is a 27 Point four percent chance to win the series with 65% chance to win three games. Repeating, of course. Repeating, of course. Well, I mean, BB Gungan's off to a fantastic start, being able to coin out these double one drops and be able to develop the freezing trap against the totem golem, which is super problematic. Nostam is overloaded too, so it's not like he has much options here, and I think he's forced to... To, to attack into here. And so with that freezing trap, he plays Eternal Sentinel, unlocks himself so that Flamery Faces can come out the following turn. Is it worth it, though, to play the Eternal Sentinel now? He's still going to have the Mana Crystals available next turn because he That's didn't true. overload this turn. So maybe it's better to play the Flamery Faces anyway, since the Eternal Sentinel would be traded into relatively easily by a number of things. Or would it be better to wait until the Flamer Phase comes out, then play the Eternal Sentinel to unlock crystals later on in the game? Yep, uh, great point there. Now, this is something really annoying. You know, you, you look at Spell Power Totem, it's normally a very threatening totem, given the fact that Maelstrom Portal and Spirit Claws exists. But BB Gun Gun has Divine Shield, so he's like, yeah, I don't really care about your Spell Power Totem. It's going to get the damage in. And Hunter's Mark picked off the top. Oh, man. I mean, if there's one way that the Shaman knows how to race with, it's with four mana seven sevens. The Flame Refaces is extremely potent for trading, but when BB Gun 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 picks up the only Hunter's Mark in his deck, that is going to be very difficult for Nostam to climb back from. Oh, yeah. That is a lot of investment into a seven seven. Uh, You know, it's it's effectively six mana. Uh, Spread across two turns, but six mana nonetheless. And to have it killed by sort of two one drops, effectively two mana, is uh, really rough when your early game is as bad as Nostum's been. And one thing that Nostum has cut from his list in order to make it more aggressive is 
any semblance of AoE. He has no Maelstrom Portal. He has no Lightning Storm, no Spirit Claws. So nothing to sort of deal with boards like this that are very small but very annoying. Okay, playing Internal Sentinel first so he can unlock his crystals. Uh, that ended up making him a little bit vulnerable to snipe, but he knows that his opponent doesn't play it, so that's why he can get away with it. Uh, Nostam the one who plays the snipe. Now, BB Gun Gun has the Unleashed the Hounds. That is more damage to pile on. Does pick up the Eaglehorn Bow instead, though, which means that the Secrets that does get activated also gives him additional damage. So BB Gun Gun's in a really powerful spot once again to just leverage the fact that Hunter is putting on the aggression, not Nostam. Yeah, and this is Nasum with more the more aggressive decks, especially against Hunter, should have the edge on paper. But when you get off to that good of a start as the Hunter, you can definitely engage in a race, and you are going to win that race. And Nasum's going to attack yeah. into Explosive Trap. That's going to wrap it up here. I think Nasum sees the writing on the wall. BB Gun Gun has pretty much gotten off to the perfect start that he wanted to, to get. And even though the aggressive Shaman is very fast, you can definitely see where it's lost a step. I mean, it, it used to be good in its prime, DJ, but, you know, Father Time wins again. Or in this case, uh, Team 5. <laughs> they, they took down Hacker Shaman at the knees. And uh, at this point, I think uh, Nostam, it's lights out for him. A, a, a job well done for the year, getting this far to the tournament of HCT. But BB Gun Gun is in prime position to lock up the series and go to the semifinals. Yeah, these are the moments where you're, when you're Nostum, where you think back to Winter Championship, and you go back to the finals versus Amnesiac, and you think about all the little things that you could have done back then oh, no. when you were so close. Not like this. You, you, you can't help it. You, you don't want to think about those things, but you can't help it. And uh, again, it's, it's going to be a story of uh, better luck next year for Nostum, but BB Gun Gun finally you know, proving himself. All of these players, like you mentioned, that have used BB Gun Gun as a practice partner and as a tool to help themselves win, it's his turn to try and make a big run towards a world championship. And Nasim, he's going to throw all the damage that he can possibly throw at the face of BB Gun Gun, but it just won't be enough. Yeah, I'm, I've been saying it throughout the series, uh, and we've been saying it in the pre-show, and, and throughout the entire year, you've been hearing whispers of BB Gun Gun. Now he's actually here and being able to go to the semifinals. Don't be surprised to see this guy win the tournament. Yeah. So many BB guns he can buy with the money from the World Championship Not if, why he so, if he so chooses. I'd like to think it is. Yeah. Uh, so it has a theme. Uh, but a, a very impressive performance. BB gun, I mean, he, he just brings solid decks. He brings so. solid, but he also brought something a little bit weird. You know, the mm -hmm. Secret Hunter is pretty cool to yeah. watch. Yeah. And of course, his own take on the Temple Mage, I think a lot of people have been debating to the ends of time. You know, people, especially within uh, the Western community, laugh at the idea of Kabbalist Tomes and some of these other cards being included in, but they have faith in these cards, and for good reason, because they practice it dozens, hundreds of times by now. All right, well, to give you guys a deeper look at that match, as well as preview the next quarterfinal to come, let's send it over to our friends. That's admirable.